Gina's father, uh, responsible for the creation of Maria, Robert, the first Langs Metropolis. Scott will reveal his role in this, and uh, I'm pretty much going to turn it over to them. And uh, here they are. <laughs> First, I want to thank you that I can be here and talk to you. It is a very great honor for me. Thank you very much. And I want to at first thank my friend Brian who made this possible together with Kevin. Thank you. And I want to turn to another person with whom I never would have been here. This is Joanna. Thank you. <laughs> she runs a, web, a Facebook group site about the German Expressionistic film. And she took me in. So I came, I came in this scene, and in the following I'm here. I've heard, I've heard that many people wonder how I can be the daughter of Walter Schulze Mittendorf because he was born in 1893 and it is uh, no, no secret I am the daughter of a second wife and I was born when he was 55 years old so I had a father that could could, be, could have been my grandfather, an old father. Um, and um, on, the other, on the other side, I heard people asking why it was possible that in Germany the expressionistic film came up so, uh, so overwhelming, so, so great in this kind of making and this has this has reasons of history as I had an old father of 55 years I had a father who had his own history and this made me uh, interested in history and so um, All the, all the people who did, who worked in the expressionistic film were roughly born in the end of the 19th century, I can say. Fritz Lang was born in 1890, uh, my father in 93, and quite a few people were born around this time. And this was a time which was, one can say, one, it was a changing point in history. Um, the industri in the industrial revolu revolution was almost finished. <coughs> there were many, many great scientific revolutions at that time. Um, many famous scienti scientists came from that time. I do not think that we have so many really famous scientists at present. And. Um, and on the other hand, although the, um, uh, the consciousness was very broadened, on the other hand, you find a very strong nationalism. The country was ruled by emperors or queens or kings, except France. And uh, they, there was a very, very strong ego of nationalism. And this clashed with this broaden of, of consciousness. And in this clashing, the First wor World War happened. The nation, the nation fought against each other. Although all the royal families were uh, relatives among them, they fought, with, uh, and they fought a war which never had happened in this kind before. 
because it was a war that grounded in, for the first time, grounded in machines. You had, for the first time, you fought with machine guns, you fought with um, poison, chemical, chemical, yes. chemical gas, poison gas, and you, you, for the first time at the end of the war, you fought with airplanes, and so any, any, any minute, five soldiers died, four soldiers died, every minute, four soldiers died. So it was horrible, and Germany, together with Austria, lost the war, and it is so incredible why the, the country who lost the war came about so strong with an expressionist film. I think this is because the dark, which was suppressed, had to come out. All the creatures had to come out. And um, by my father was 21 when the First World War start, started and was 22 when he went to war. Everybody, every man had to go to war. And. Um, he never was injured. There was, I, I don't know, there was a kind of aura. Is it aura? You know the word? word? Uh, aura. 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 Aura, yeah. There was aura around him. Kind of untouchable. He, he, he didn't, although many, many men got injured, he didn't get injured. And uh, you know, maybe you know Fritz Lang, in his uh, older times, uh, war, um, Monaco. And this came from an injury of the First World War, what he had in the eye. So he had always afterwards problems with one of his eyes. Um, and after the war, my, my father then, by this time, by uh, the time of 20, on this picture, on, on this picture, you see him at the age of 27. There he is, 27. This is, uh, so. Thank you. This 1920, he was 27. Um, at that time, he, uh, he studied at the, um, first at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts and later on the emperor was uh, driven out. It was um, the, 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 the Academy of the State of Germany. And at this, at, in this time of incredible creativity, because the war was so awful, people yearned for something else than war. And this is art and creativity. And um, he met, he had, a, he had a friend who worked for the film already for Fritz Lang. This, he's called Robert Held, together with um, Walter Röhrig. They both were film architects. And he, he, they brought uh, my, my father together with Fritz Lang. And they immediately understand uh, each other very well, because everybody was um, very, how can you say, ambitious to do art. And so he got his first, he got his first order um, to to work as a sculptor for Fritz Lang in the film Destiny. I do not know if you heard about it. He did uh, the, the sculptural things there. And then he worked uh, again. Uh, I think it was the second film he did, it was Metropolis. So he, 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 he knew Fritz Lang already. And Fritz Lang gave him the order to create a machine man because 
machines were in the were in the conscious became con it was I think the birth of machines in the in the in the human psyche because before machines there were always machines but not in this extent so um, he had to he had this order of the machine man and he really thought he didn't like that. He didn't like this honor because it was so difficult for him to to find a way to manage this. It should have been a wearable costume. You can do a statue as a machine match. It's no problem to, to, to sculpture as a, stat, a statue. But to do it in a way that a very quite tender actress is wearing it, it was, for him, he said, hmm, he, he really he didn't like it so much, but he did it. He did it then, yeah. So he thought, how can I do it? How can I do it? How can I accomplish this? And um, by chance, he found a, found an architect uh, study who had plastic wood for for their purpose, and they didn't need this plastic wood, so they gave it to my father. And uh, he said, this is a material of which I can do the machine mesh because it is light. It is light and it is uh, workable. And um, so this was his first concern. The design was not his concern so much because he said, we have the technical form in art, it exists, and um, he just did it, he, he, he even did a, did a sketch for it. He just did it out of the moment. When he found the way how to do it, he did it right away on the forms. Um, this, make, this, makes it, this also makes it so unique. There is no, no former um, trying. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's it. Um, and not only uh, the machine man he did, he did all the, all the statues in there, in, in Metropolis. And uh, what is, from, in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of my father as well, um, his most, um, how can one say it, most uh, heartfelt pieces, are death and seven deadly sins. This, uh, the machine man, for him was, I do not think, I, 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 cannot, I cannot really explain. Um, it was something strange he did. It, and, and I think it stood all, all the time, something strange. But death and seven deadly sins, this was really where his heart was. And he did it in heads and in little statues, about 30 centi centimeters, as a model for the for the actors. Okay. Okay. Yes. Aha. Okay. In order how how the uh, act actors should be seen in the film. And um, Metropolis is is so. Uh, it, I think it is, the, it is an outstanding film in the expressionistic era of film because it casts, so, <coughs> it is a forecast which people didn't understand at that time. They found the, they, they found the film crazy. They, they could not understand it. But in our time, if we, if we look back, we can, we can much more understand what Metropolis is about. It is a forecast with, to a time which I think just started and is not finished yet. Um, the, roboter, uh, the robots are just going to come. At one day they will be as popular as smartphones. But it is not, we, are, we didn't have reached that time yet. 
and um, so many other other things in Metropolis, the whole social thing with the with the um, lords and the workers and the clash of the classes. Uh, we didn't have overcome this yet, although it looks different today. But um, the money thing in in there that that uh, there was there was. It's, as they say it, um, every wheel, every turn of the wheel will bring more gold. And he put it in, not in, as money, he put the value as gold. And um, we find this today as well, still. And what I find so interesting, so interesting is death and de seven deadly sins because when we when we think of horror, or when we think of peace, or when we think of horrible creatures, and this is this is a convent, I think, uh, where where it is about horror film and horror creatures. <coughs> they all based on the seven deadly sins. Without them, no beast is there, no demon is there, no horror is there. This is the fundament of uh, of any horror, and it is so. It is so um, ungrabbable. We can. I, I cannot imagine. Do you can you can you uh, do you know any horror film? You can. I happen to be at the wrong place, being uh, yeah. not much of a horror fan myself. But you may, you may have a horror f films in mind. Um, these are these are not existent. They are made up. But the deadly sins are not made up. So, uh, and and the, and the tricky on them, you cannot see them. You cannot see them because they are dwelling be below your blanket, and uh, this makes them so so special. And what I found in the in the combination of machine men and seven deadly sins is that if you look closely, they are exactly the opposite, the opposite, the upside downs. You have the machine man with a strong experience, uh, with a strong expression, very strong expression. And if you, we have, do we, do we have, we, I think we have no face of the, of the machine man. Um, if you see in the face, you can, see, can sense some cold consciousness behind them. <coughs> Something is dwelling inside while the costume is made of, of uh, cold metal machinery like but inside there is there is life very opposite to the seven deadly sins they appear as human they must appear as human because they stuck to the human you ca cannot speak about this, the sins without speaking of persons of so they are made, they are, appear as persons, but inside they are hollow. There is nothing there. And therefore, the machine men and seven deadly sins are, are building a, 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 yeah, a, a counterpart, so to say. And this is, a, I think this is a, for me, this is a, core secret of the film because it touches people so deeply. It is not only a, a scenery that is beautifully done. There is, there is very, very much, uh, I can call it mystic, um, it is mystic because it uses Christian mystic. You know the uh, Tower of Babel and all these uh, the legends, um, they, they use in this farm. 
And okay, this is a metropolis. It was, a, how can I say, a changing point. It was, it began 25, and the um, the work ended in 27, where it was shown in the cinema. And it is just the middle of the time of the so-called Weimarer Republik, which is the 19 years between war and dictatorship. Just in the middle, it was so. It was on the peak. To which, to which side will it? Will the coin fall? Will it really fall to freedom? What art is? Art cannot be done without freedom. Or will it fall to dictatorship? And it fall to dictatorship. This was a time because uh, one one movie title I find very very true. This is the one, The Empire Strikes Back. Because if there is freedom, there are people who are scared of freedom, and those people will strike back. And this is what happened in Germany. And I think uh, George Lucas. Uh, uh, had some uh, ideas from this German time. So um, then my father did uh, Spies, he did uh, the Nibelungen before Metropolis. The, the Nibelungen, <coughs> I do not know if you heard about it, is a very special German topic. It's a German saga, so to, so, so, so to say. As um, what, as a as a uh, as the Ilias by Homer, or what do you have? I do not know if you have sagas in in America. You, you know, there's many, there's many sagas. I'm sure stories. In you, you know, in America, many sagas. I'm sure. Okay. You're putting me on point here, though, and I don't have any name. But they like our westerns. Yes, exactly. Western. Western. Yeah. Western. Western. Yeah. Genre. Western. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and the and the last movie he did was uh, the Testament of Dr. Mabuse. Okay. Uh, could you, could you? This picture here, which my friend Brian did, is. Uh, T-shirt. This picture shows him when he is creating the mask of Dr. Mabuse. Okay, and um, and then in '33, Hitler came up, you know, and at that time, freedom was fought. No freedom allowed anymore. None. So. Um, the film could not, the art could not do what they wanted anymore. And this included the film as well. And many, many artists fled to you, to, to America or to England. And um, my father was about to think if he should, but he didn't. For private reasons. Um, I made a website about my father, and there you can read all these things. It's, uh, you find it very easily under the name Schutz and Mittendorf on, in, uh, in, in the internet. Um, he, he worked as a sculptor, and he um, had always he always had connection with the film. He, in between, even in the time of, of Hitler, he worked for films as well. And when, um, when it came to the Second World War, he didn't want to, he was in the First World War, and he became a lieutenant in the First World War. So he was uh, regi registers, registered as in reserve. In reserve. So there was always a danger that they caught him to go to war. And he thought, what can I do not to go to war? He, he, would, he would never have fought for Hitler. And then, he's, uh, then he came to the idea that as he worked for the film for so many times, 
he he go he went to an um, film industry and was uh, taken under contract, so that he only only worked for the film and um, did not work as a sculptor anymore. He was engaged as a customer for the movie, and this was very tricky because the Nazis were very keen on films because they found film as the best way to do propaganda. So the, all of people who worked with the film were protected not to go to war. And this was his ch chance. He took it as a chance not to go to war. But this had in consequence that he never got back to to be a sculptor. He stood uh, as a customer until he retired. <coughs> in, uh, I think in 68 he retired. So this is, this is in a beautiful synopsis yeah. of a career of a great man who has uh, put imagery into our minds that will be there forever and really has set a standard. And I think it's a huge honor. I don't know if anybody can appreciate the gravity of having oh, yeah, Martina yeah. Schulz and Mittendorf in your presence. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. We're, we're so honored to have you here. Um, I know there were so many questions where we were set up as well downstairs with our replica of the robot. And there's been a lot of questions that I know you wanted to pose to Bertina or myself about things that you may have. This is an opportunity to do that. Yeah, uh, if you have questions for, uh, for the film or maybe some comments, you're very welcome. Anyone? Someone back there. <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, are there any books on your father's work? Books, uh, no. Um, so the the person of my father was uh, he was very um, a very decent person. He he made no fuss about himself. He did his work. Um, he was very respected, but uh, and he was uh, had always. Um, was always a very, uh, very busy man. He had always many, many work. <coughs> so, um, uh, in, in Germany, it is different. It is a bit. I, I, I sometimes a bit feel in Germany like um, the profit doesn't count in its own country. Um, uh, you have, you have a kind of absence of interest. Very different from here. Very different. In so, fact, it gets, seems to get, get interesting, but it becomes interesting content to Germany when it's of interest abroad first. It has to happen here before it happens there. They won't take well, their own content. Uh, Germany is a country, ex uh, especially since the end of the Second World War, where the Americans brought the freedom. Um, and I, 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 was, I was brought up in Berlin, which means I always listen to American uh, Forces Network because they have the best music. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, we, and uh, the Germans are people who take over. They, they, what comes from America, they take over. They are the first in Europe who, who have who have what comes from America. So I think to coming here is the right way to go back to Germany. It is like going to the, it is like um, going the wrong direction with the bus to go then in the right direction. Germany is going to become interested in uh, Walter Schultz and Mittdorf's work again after this event. They will be hoping to see things on YouTube about it, which will help Bertina back at home. Yeah, this is a problem. The only thing, the only thing Germany does not take over 
uh, things like Facebook and all these new, they are, they are, I might I sometimes have this uh, expression, they are, they are Facebook phobic. <laughs> it is, it is a good time, does one say a good time? Not to be on Facebook. And everybody who's in Facebook is, mm. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is a really backdrawn um, attitude. My writing, yeah. Uh, what I told you about Metropolis, uh, Metropolis, I do not know if it would have occurred to me when I wouldn't have been the daughter of my father. I must say this honestly. I do not know whether I would have found so much much interest in it. Um, but as I am, I found the interest and um, I am at present writing a book about Metropolis. But uh, as I'm writing it, so many ideas came. Uh, and uh, I could think of other books to come, but I do, I do not know whether my lifetime is long enough to do all these things. Yeah. And this is what I like, what I really love most. Uh, I, I got to the point that I love writing the most I do. When I'm right, I'm the most satisfied person. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I see a hand way in the back. Yes. Why did you have a comment? I brought it up to uh, your friend there before. About, about Metropolis itself. That, first of all, that's the only live film I've ever seen in its entirety. And that the uh, unusual thing about it was is that bad guys actually won in the end. Yeah, I'm roughly understanding. Okay, you, do. you mean uh, bad guys won in Metropolis? Yeah, because the, uh, the, purpose of, the purpose of going to the trouble of constructing the uh, robot was to uh, essentially no, no, right. worker exist resistance. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. <coughs> yeah. What are yeah, this is this is what I uh, what I see is uh, how how um, predict how predictably uh, the metropolis is. They saw they saw this coming. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying in general terms, no matter what the workers did, they always, they wound up getting uh, what we call in this country the shaft. <laughs> no matter what you try. Yeah, yeah. But they are still. Uh, but it looks different. It looks different. You had a question. I just had a question about another film, uh, Princess of Atlantis and the giant sculpt of Rigged Helm. Do you know if your father did that sculpt? No, that's not. Okay. Anyone else? But well, Scott. I was going to say Brigid Helm was, was her own free property. She wasn't tied to, you know, she, uh, any, any likeness of hers was maintained by her. Uh, actually, from my understanding, uh, Schultz and Mendoz did not do any sculptures of Brigham and Helm at all, only like aspects of it. I think it's a, oh, sorry, go ahead. 